of life. When the clouds unfold and their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? Oh, we have an anchor, church, and that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the pillars roll. Fasten to the rock, Christ Jesus, which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Oh, it is end time storm. Glory be to God, you got to understand. I'm preaching and using this topic this morning. Buckle up and stand firm, for end time storm is blowing. And we are in the time, my God Almighty, when it is the time, the time is here. And we have to understand what we are dealing with. The word of God says in Ephesians 6 from 10 to 18. He says, finally brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that we should put on the whole arm of God. Uh, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, you don't understand uh, that you are standing against the wiles. You are fighting against the wiles of the wicked one. He says, against flesh and blood says the word of God but it's against principalities it's against powers and it's against rulers of the darkness of this age it's against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places he says therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all you can stand stand for having girded your ways with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the field of shape, faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray not always with prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end uh, with all perseverance and uh, perseverance and supplication of all the saints oh god almighty it's turbulence time it's turbulence church yes. it's turbulence yes. when you're in an aircraft and you're flying and when the turbulence starts what does the pilot says to you he says buckle up of God Lord. and you have to understand that you and I have to be aware of all of the signs and the times and when you look at what's happening around you you don't have to ask any question you're looking at the signs and the time that Jesus Christ told his disciples that there will come a time when folks will rise up and say they are the Christ that they are Jesus Christ. Have you not heard of that? Folks who are preaching and telling their people that they are Jesus and they have folks who are falling for that false nonsense. It is end time storm church and a lot of folks are being blown out of the kingdom My of Lord. God. My Lord. So we have to be careful. Mm. We are living in a serious time. We are living in a critical time and it is for us to understand it says the spirit of God God wants to warn these people in this church he wants to warn you that you do not be kept be taken off guard yes amen because the enemy will set it up and make it look nice mm. he will make it look like there's nothing that this is the way you need to do it mm. and when he is setting a trap for you it is the whole thing that he sets up and concoct with his little demonic forces. And God's people have to be able to identify when the devil is at work. If you look at it and it doesn't look like it is coming from.
from God Almighty, then you should know that you should stay away from it. Yes, I want to take your attention to Matthew chapter 14 and from 22 to 23. The word of God says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. I said the, the whole idea and the goal was for them to go on the other side. Amen. It was not meant for them to be stuck in the sea or the river. They were supposed to move. It's a movement, church. It is a going forward, you say. And so what the devil has a way to hijack you and I. And when you try to go forward, you take a couple steps forward. And the next thing you stand still and don't know who you are in Christ. Some of us have gone back to where God takes you from. And it's that we have to understand. That is the whole of the enemy. And the word of God says that, and that and he went, went, sent the multitudes away and that he went upon the mountain by himself to pray. And now when it was evening came and that he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Tossed. Tossed. By the waves. And the word confirms that the wind was contrary. It was contrary to what Jesus Christ had purposed in the first beginning. Yes, and now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a ghost. It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Can you imagine? They are being fearful of a ghost. And it was Jesus. So it tells me that they never know the Lord too much. And we got to be careful of that, says the Spirit of God. And but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer. And he's telling the church this morning to be of good cheer. For I, Jesus, have overcome the turbulence of the storm. Amen. I have overcome it on Calvary's cross. Amen. And though it may blow, stand firm and anchor in me. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the message today for this church. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. You hear that now, Peter walking on the water. Uh, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, uh, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. There's so many times uh, that when you profess your faith in Jesus, and you feel good. You're walking right. Ain't you? You come into church and you're worshiping God. And you feel like you're strong. And the next thing you know, as you turn your eyes out of the church and you're going through the doors, and the devil start up a wave. He start up a boisterous wind and to blow you out. And if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, my Lord, if you take of the Lord, Jesus. like Peter. Oh, I have good news for people. The word of God says, be of good cheer. Mm. Be of good cheer. Because there are so many of us that the devil tries to blow out. Mm. My Lord. <laughs> oh. Huh. I see it every day. Mm. The spirit of God shows me it every day. Folks that the devil mark to take out of the kingdom of God. And we sometimes, I have to be praying and asking God to keep them firmly, firmly anchored upon Jesus Christ. Yes, we got to be a weird church. It is a serious time. Yes, it is. It is. It is not a time when you can take your spiritual journey lightly. Mm. Don't take it lightly. Because if you do, 
it's one of the worst thing for you to come to church or you come in the house of God and you profess some things in the house of God before God and then when you walk away uh, for the devil is ready as you finish talking hey he says come on it's you and I you don't have your brothers and sisters to, to lift you up now or to prop you up ah, I have you and I'm ready for you I'm ready to blow this storm on you but I'm here to tell you be of good cheer <laughs> oh Jesus Christ overcame on Calvary's cross and if Jesus says that you are going to make it to the kingdom of God all you have to do is to keep your eyes on him Amen. and remain strong in him Amen. remain strong in him church the word says that and the Lord says stretch out his hand to Peter, as Peter cried out and said, save me. Sometimes we have to cry out to God yes, to save you. us. Amen. Oh, we need to cry out to God for ourselves Hallelujah. to save us in these storms. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And when he cried out, said, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, 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 you have little faith. Why did you doubt? My Lord. I said the doubting in God's people My Lord. will take us out. Jesus. The doubting that we continue to doubt, Jesus. My it will blow us out of the kingdom of God. Jesus. So be aware. Be aware of this end time storm because it is truly blowing. And those who saw Jesus, when Jesus told the wind it will be still. Mm. Oh, if we could just cry out to God sometimes mm. by faith mm. and tell God that I feel like I'm drowning. Mm. I feel like I'm going under. Mm. Save me. Mm. And Jesus Christ Yes. The Son of God. Yes. The great high priest. Oh, the bright and morning star. Oh, the sweet rose of Sharon. Oh, the conquering lion of Judah will save you. Yes. Glory be to God. Psalm 107 from 27 to 31 confirms they reel to and fro and star like a drunken man. And they were all at wit's end. And then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. And so he guides them to their desired heaven. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works and to the children of men. Oh, if God's people would just praise him. Amen. Oh, God Almighty, you would have the angelic hosts mm. of heaven coming down yes. to war on your behalf. Amen. And we truly need them in a time like this, church. Yes. Oh, we can't do this by ourselves. Oh. We cannot battle this storm by ourselves. We need help from heaven. Because the word of God tells us. And it warns us in Revelation 12. And from verse 7 to 12. Hear what the word says. The word says and war broke out in heaven. War in heaven. Yes. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the people and the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and, the, and strength and the kingdom of our God.
and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony Amen. and they did not love their lives to the death therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is very short Amen. and as I was going through God's word I asked God I said God why did you cast him on earth uh -huh. I'm telling you I did I said why didn't you cast him on another planet uh. where there's no children of yours uh. to be tempted and to be blown out uh. by his end time storm uh. and the spirit of God whispered to my spirit and says yes I had to cast him on earth because I want to show him that I am the power of all powers. Hallelujah. I, he said that. He thinks that he can overpower man. He thinks that he can blow them out man. with this end time storm. But I have to show the devil in hell that because they are the ones that created sin on the earth, it has to be settled once and for all. My God Almighty with humanity. It has to be settled with man. It cannot be on any other planet. Oh yes, and I said, God, I put my trust in you. Hold me in a time like this. Don't allow this enemy to blow me out. Oh, help me to stand firm. Help me, my God, to buckle up. Help me, my God Almighty, to anchor in Jesus Christ. Because the devil thinks that he truly thinks that he's going to win this battle. Oh my God Almighty. He thinks that he's going to blow every, every child of God out of the kingdom of God. But I have news for him this morning. As Isaiah 59 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. From the west and his glory and from the rising of the sun. And that when the enemy comes in like a flood, oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. When he comes in like an end time storm, oh, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And that's the power of Almighty God. And so God's people then and it can be of good cheer. Mm. Yes. Be of good cheer. Yes. Don't hang your head down. My Lord. And, and, and behave like oh I'm not going to make it. Mm. Oh you have a savior. <laughs> oh you have Jesus as yes. your anchor. Yes. And you and I will make it mm. into the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. I am prophesying it today. Yes. That every child of God who is seated in this church will make it in the yes, kingdom Lord. of God. Yes, that every child of God and that hears this message and believe in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Who shall not be taken out by the Einstein storm. But they will stand firm and they will make into the kingdom of God. We shall hear the well done, the good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of my kingdom. You shall be seated around that big round table with your Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be given the opportunity to meet him face to face. Oh, you will see the prophets of the past. Oh, you will see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Oh, you will see the old brother Paul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You will see Peter, James, and John. Oh, you will get to know them, church. You want to meet them face to face. Oh, I claim it, I claim it, I claim it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the devil in hell will lose the battle against God's people, especially in this church. He will not blow anyone out. Oh, but every child of God that is placed in this church will remain in God's church. And I decree and declare it done in the name of
name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and God's people need to give him praise Hallelujah. and to give him glory. Oh yes. Thank you Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yes Lord. Yes, it is true. Yes Lord. If you don't believe it, I have yes, to believe Lord. it for you. I have claimed it. Yes Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ Amen. of Nazareth. Amen. That every end time storm that blow against a child of God mm. that God is going to turn it back mm. unto the devil yes. and instead of it blowing you out Hallelujah. it is going to blow him out Amen. into the Amen. pits of hell Amen. and he's going to remain in the pits of hell Hallelujah. where he belongs and it's for God's people to give him praise yes, Lord. and to give him the glory he has perilous times church perilous times you're looking around and you see the things that are happening. Mm, yes. Perilous times. Mm, mm, mm. Says the Spirit of God. Mm. Yes, the Spirit of God is confirming 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. And because the word claims so long ago, Brother Paul wrote it. And to warn Brother Timothy of it. He says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Yeah. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, <laughs> boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, yes, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather, than lovers of God having a form of godliness having a form of godliness yes mm. but denying its power mm. and uh, from such people turn away My Lord. for of this sort are those who creep into the households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins yes. led away by various lusts mm. always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus. And the word of God warns us. Yes. And we are seeing these things. Yes. We are experiencing them every day. My Lord. Folks are going after money and the things that are not of God. Because the devil raises up those things that folks can be, be distracted. Mm. It's a distraction church. Yes. Distraction for elimination. He wants to get you out of the kingdom of God. He wants to get you out of the promises of God. And but you and I have to be very sober, the word of God says. And, and to be watchful. You have to be on the alert. Yes. It's like you're walking and you're expecting that you're going to put your foot and it's going to end in a trap. And so and you, have you ever seen the line mines? Or hear about them. When linemen's minds, when the, the soldiers are fighting battles, and they have a lot of line mines, land mines, I mean, uh, that the enemy plants and, and cover them. And the soldiers are walking and they're going into battle and they don't know where a line mine, land mine is. There are so many soldiers of America have lost their lives. Because of line landmines, they will put their foot and push, and it's all blown up. And God's people have to be on the alert. Just think about those things when you're walking in the spirit. You see, that is how you have to look at it. You cannot just take life for granted if you're if you're thinking that you're going to make it into the kingdom of God. You have to be vigilant. You have to be wise and to use wisdom. You have to test all the spirits. Folks coming with different theologies. Folks coming to tell you this and to tell you that. Mm. And it is for you uh, to seek God on those things. It is for you to ask the spirit of God to reveal to you. And to put you on the right track. Yes. Because I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. And the plan is in place. And the devil's hope and desire is to take you and I with him. Mm. 
I ain't gonna spend no eternity with him. Mm -mm. Hey, heaven was created for the devil and his angels. Yes. And when they misbehave in heaven and were cast down, salvation is for man. Amen. Salvation, I say, is for mankind. Amen. It is not meant for the devil. Alright? So you and I need to stay in the fold of Jesus Christ. Yes. You and I need to keep our anchor grounded in Jesus Christ. Mm. You and I have to trust our Savior Lord yes. who did it for us. It would be a shame to see a child of God who Jesus Christ died for, mm. shed his blood for, mm. and to see them Ending up, my Lord, spending eternity with this old foe, my Lord, spending eternity in hell's pit with this foe. I ain't going there with him because it was not meant for me. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, and it's only them need to go there. But unfortunately, God's creation does not want to hear and to take heed. It's just as how Noah preached in those times and he told them to repent. He told them that there's a time coming when the, world, the earth will be destroyed and they just went on lightly. They didn't believe it. They didn't change their ways. But if you and I are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, yeah. if you and I are hearing and know that the end time storm is blowing and that the whole Idea, the whole plan of the devil is to blow you out. My Lord. Then it's for you to take warning. Yes. It is for you to test this the signs of the time. My Lord. As you look at the church, yes, you have to look at it. Mm. And you know, when I look at Peter's life, and Peter was walking, he was a disciple chosen by Jesus Christ yes. to walk with him. And Jesus taught the man. And then at the end of Jesus' time on earth, when this man should be glorifying the Lord, my God Almighty, Jesus told him and warned him. He said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that you may be sift as a wheat. Jesus told him, I am here telling you now, as thus said the Lord, that Satan has asked the Lord uh, to give him the permission to sift you and I, to shake you out of the kingdom of God. Oh yes, he's ready to shake church, uh, some folks. Uh, but the word says in Luke 22, from 31 to 34, uh, Jesus said to him, I have prayed for you. He says, the devil asked for your permission. But Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Yes, strengthen them and tell them that the devil means business. That the devil is not playing no small battle. That the devil's aim is to mess you and I up. Is to take away the kingdom that is promised to us. And that he wants to get us church. Huh. And I said when I look at the word. If Peter had just said Lord. You know continue to pray for me. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. If he had just said Lord. I know whatever you say it is so. Please continue to pray for me. Mm. But the man thought that he could stand on his own, you see. Mm. He thought that if he had his anchor on himself, that it would be okay. And he told Jesus, after Jesus told him, I prayed for you. Hear, hear him to Jesus. Lord, I'm ready to go with you. Mm. Both to prison and to death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. Only when the Lord warns some of us mm. 
that we would just fall on our faces yes, and say, Jesus, help me and pray for me. Yes, Continue to pray, Lord, for me. Yes, Lord. And Jesus said to him, he says, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times that you know me. And I can imagine uh, if I were in Peter's shoe and saw the Lord who raised the dead and opened the eyes of the blind, I would take that word seriously. And what I would do is to be watchful. <laughs> oh, I would make sure that uh, I didn't go into the company of folks who didn't know Jesus, you see. Uh, oh, I would escape them. My Lord. <laughs> Only if when God reveals some things and we hear it and we just decide that look, it's better for me to walk this way. I'm not going to do this because if I do this, there might be a trap down there, you see. Oh, 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 oh. But folks don't do that, you see. They, they're following the man Peter. And, and the word of God continues to say that everything that Jesus said to him, it came through. Uh, uh, the cock crowed, uh, crow after the cock crowed three times, Peter denied Jesus. Because Peter found himself at a place where he shouldn't have been. He went into the company of some folks who were there to kill Jesus, you see. And he didn't want uh, to be taken down. And so because of that, he, he, he said, I didn't know the man. My Lord. He cursed the word of God says. After certain folks say, yes, you, I saw you with him. You look like him. You dress like him. Oh, we got to be careful. We got to be careful, wow. says the Spirit of God. We got to be careful. You see, when Jesus saved you, mm. and you see when he sanctify you, wow. and you see when he take you out of sin, yes, and he, he clothe you, with his garment. You got to be careful. The spirit says what you do. Because you have a mark on you. You say. Oh. You have a mark on you. Says the spirit. So we got to be careful of where we go. Because in our company. We find ourselves in some places. You might end up denying Jesus. You might. In a place. Where you feel like you can't say I know the Lord. Mm. Ah. Mm. My, 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 says the Spirit of God. Mm. Hey. Ooh, hey, hey, hey. I would be careful of where I walk. I would be careful as of now where I go. Since I know that the end time uh, storm is blowing, you say. Of who I connect myself with. Because I don't want to have to be put in a position where I can't talk about the Lord. The word in 1 Corinthians 10 from 12 to 13 cautions us. And the word says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Ha, I love that word. Mm -hmm. And I live by that word. Oh yes. I take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to read it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says. Therefore let him who thinks he stands. Take heed. Mm -hmm. Lest he fall. Mm -hmm. No temptation has overtaken you. Except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Uh, but with the temptation will also make uh, the way of escape uh, that you may be able to bear it. And I have to caution you on that last part of the scripture. Because sometimes God is making a way of escape for you and I. And you don't want to follow where God is leading you. That is a problem, church. Mm -mm -mm. 
you will find yourself in a situation, says the Spirit of God. And God is making a way of escape. Have you ever gone into any, any place like you're doing, and you're walking in the mountains or whatever, you're hiking, and they have different signs that tell you where to go so that you can come out of there alive. If you go to the airport, everywhere you go, you see signs. And the arrows will tell you, if you're going this direction, this destination, the arrow will tell you, go that way. If you want to get where you think you're going. But if the arrow tells you that you are to go to gate 12, because gate 12 will lead you to the aircraft that is going to Jamaica. And you decide on your own that I'm not going to take gate 12. I'm going to take gate 14. I don't have to say anything more. The wrong gate. And so, uh, when the temptation comes upon you, uh, when temptation comes, the devil will show you something. And he will tell you, do this. you can't do it. And the Holy Spirit is saying, no, if you do it, you're going to end up in a serious place. But some of us, he's making a way of escape for us. My Lord. And that is how he makes a way of escape for us. But we have to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. If, we, if, if God is trying <laughs> to, 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 to stop us from falling, from stopping the devil to blow us out, and he's saying to you, don't do this, don't go there, don't, don't go there, don't, and you ignore the direction where God is pointing you. God is saying, stay here, and you know I don't want to stay here, I want to go over there. Oh, my Lord. The way of escape will make no sense because you and I won't escape. I'm here to tell you be of good cheer, says the Spirit of God. Hmm. Because God is always making a way out yeah. for His children. Amen. But you and I have to be or Obedient. Amen. We have to obey. We have an anchor church. We are not in the storm by ourselves. We have an anchor. Jesus. The word of God in Hebrews 6 from 19 to 20 encourage us. Hear what the word says. The word says this hope we have as an anchor of the soul. The hope is Christ Jesus. Both sure and steadfast. And which enters the presence behind the veil. Where the forerunner has entered for us. Even Jesus Christ having become high priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus Christ, our anchor, and he's also our high priest, Amen. is there and he's rebuking the storms daily, these end time oh, storms. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he's giving us grace, church, day by day. The word says in Ephesians 4, uh, but to each one of us grace was given according to to the measure of Christ's gift that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting and that you 
put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. The end time storm is blowing. Buckle up. Buckle up. Stand firm. My Lord. Yes. Jesus. You have to put on the whole arm of God. Yes, Lord. Help me, Jesus. The whole armor. Jesus. As I illustrated with the aircraft, you cannot sit and think the tray is going to keep you in if you pull it out. And guess what? The air hostesses are vigilant. They won't move the plane. That aircraft will not be moved if every passenger doesn't have that seatbelt in place. It has to be buckled because they know what turbulence is all about. And it is no different. Spiritual turbulence caused by the end time storms, church. Oh, God Almighty. I can't emphasize it anymore in the spirit. It is for us to understand the signs of the times and to know that the time that we are living in right now, my Lord, that they are critical times. Yes, it is critical. The disciples wanted to know about these end times happening. And they questioned their Lord Jesus. And in Matthew 24, and from 3 to 14 and 23 to 25, Jesus illustrated the entire thing. He told them what will happen. Yes, he says rumors of wars. And he said, see that you're not troubled when you see that. He says, folks will rise up and say that they are the Christ. And he says, make sure, take heed uh, that no one deceives you. <laughs> oh God Almighty, that folks will come in my name uh, saying that I am that I am. <laughs> Don't believe it because you know that there is only one I am. Amen. And it's for God's people. He says uh, a nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Aren't you seeing that taking place right now? And he says, all these are just the beginning of sorrows. I'm just paraphrasing the word of God. You can read it for yourself when you go home. And the word of God continues to say, and then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Aren't you seeing it? Yeah. But he who endures to the end. And anyone who endures the end time storm, the word says, Jesus promised them that that one will be saved. And he says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then uh, the end will come. He says, then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders. To deceive. I tell you that word is serious word. My Lord. Hmm. False Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. And it's the word says, if possible, even the very elect of God will be deceived. Jesus said it. It's the word of God I'm reading. He said, see, I have told you beforehand. I warn you beforehand. My Lord. Prepare yourself, church, and be ready, says Ezekiel 38, 7 to 8. And you, that you and all your companies that are gathered about you, 
and be a guard for them. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter days, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate, and they were brought out of the nations, and now all of them will dwell safely. I am here to ask you this morning, oh, is your anchor is your anchor on Jesus Christ. We have an anchor church. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. Set fast and sure while the pillars rolled. Fast send to the rock which cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It will firmly hold in the streets of fear. When the breakers have told the reef is near. Though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow. Not an angry wave uh, shall our bank or flow. I say we have an anchor. We have an anchor church. We have an anchor who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let your anchor be firmly uh, placed on Jesus. If your anchor is on anything else, trust me, this end time storm is going to blow you away. Be wise. Be sober. Be vigilant. The word of God cautions us, which I'm going to use to close this message. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 11. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect and establish and strengthen and settle you to him be the glory and the dominion forever hallelujah and ever hallelujah and ever hallelujah hey oh glory be to God we praise your father we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Mm. Ooh, we magnify you, the great shepherd, with the great anchor of our souls. We bless your name, almighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise, O God. And we give you all the glory. We give you high honors, mighty God. And we adore you as our God. We thank you, mighty God, for sending out this message of caution to us. Hey, we thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. 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 Oh, hey. Hey, we praise you. Hey. Oh, we praise you. Holy God, we worship you and magnify your holy name. Oh, a name that is above every name. We thank you, God, for your love and we thank you for your many blessings and we thank you for your faithfulness and we thank you for your love. We thank you, God, hey, that we are under your divine care. We thank you, hey, 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 command us to be of good cheer. Huh? Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, God. We praise you. And we worship you. Huh? Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. We give you all the glory, oh God. We magnify your holy name. Write your words in your heart, Lord. Write this message in our hearts and let your name be forever glorified and be forever magnified. God, our Father, help us as children of yours to buckle up and to stand firm in the name of Jesus Christ. 
because the end time storm is truly blowing. We give you praise and uh, we give you glory and we give you honor. We give you power and we give you all the dominion, riches, honor, glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We give you all that and more, oh God. And we give you our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior and God's children will agree with me and say, Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus.